people who've actually slept with their step sibling or sibling. How did it happen? And how was your relationship affected? I slept with my stepsister. She came in town for visit her dad. And when I went outside to help bring luggage and she gave me the fat me eyes as soon as she saw me and instantly I knew I was in trouble point for a week and a half I kept being polite and trying to remain distant because I had been warned by my stepdad and her brothers to not even look in her direction, not bring any friends over, not do anything wrong and I had absolutely no intention of doing so. But it was the first time I had ever had anyone want me that badly, and I gave in, and we secretly got together for the remainder of the month she spent in town. We were both young and dumb, and fell in love, and thought we hid it well, but when they found out, after she left I got Maya's beat point for a few years they wouldn't let her visit, and we kept in touch. Then after college I moved to where she lived, and we have been together ever since. 11 years now, and we have a 5 year old daughter and 3 year old son. Everyone is completely fine with it now, and we make jokes about it all the time point edit, feel free to ask questions, first kiss kiss, first bang bang, do my kids call me dad or uncle, first time I met her mom, or grandparents, how I explain things to my dad or coworkers, lots of funny stories to share. I'm late to this, but here's my story that I had posted on the Tifu guy's post. Dude banged his cousin. This was in reply to a comment well at least she wins she teased breakup story my wife faked her brother in my bed when I went upstairs to sleep. We had company over and they were a bit loud and my bed is on the first floor where they all were. So I decided to go upstairs cause it would be quieter woke up about 2-3 hours later and went downstairs to grab water and rejoin my wife but she already had company point I'm pretty sure I when she test breakup story point edit probably should have used a throw away for this but whatever. Edit 2. To answer a lot of common questions they have the same mother but different fathers so they are technically half brother slash sister. She was adopted and met him about 6 months prior. They were talking on the phone constantly to the point where, even though I was happy she found her family I had to let her know I thought the frequency of their talking was weird. There, still, literally on the phone 247. I've caught her trying to put him on mute and in her pocket, so they'd still be together. It's insanely unhealthy. Yes they were drunk, but they knew what they were doing, and they are still doing it to this day. I found out about this in February of 2019, I attempted to try to work things out with her, and she had said they were just talking, and it wasn't like that anymore. I got a Facebook video chat request from her brother's then girlfriend telling me she found inappropriate texts between them and left him. She again told me they were done, and they weren't taking any more after that, because his girlfriend had outed them to her newfound family and she received messages from her sisters telling her they were disgusted and wished they never found her etc. I believed again they were done at this point. We were going out for my birthday in April, and I found her sending pictures of herself dressed up to him with replies about how sexy she looked, and emails between them about how you know what we have, we can't deny it anymore. It was gut-wrenching and heartbreaking. I served her shortly after. She's been delaying the court dates claiming she needs more time to find a lawyer because she doesn't have anywhere else to go and the house is in my name and I can't exactly evict her the Game of Thrones references aren't as funny as you think they are when it's happening to you in real life. That was one of my favorite shows and I can't even think about it anymore. Neither are the Born Hub ones. I literally can't go on a born site to jerk off anymore because everything is incest related and I instantly shut down point I may do a tofu of my own or maybe a different subreddit at some point. It's been cathartic to get this out there and read some nice replies and support from everyone but the jokes and the people who think I'm making this up for faking internet points might outweigh it point for everyone who said something kind or comforting. Thank you. And thank you for the awards. Although I really don't think this is award worthy. I'm absolutely miserable. I've been with her for literally half my life. She's the mother of my child. I never expected to lose her like this. Edit 3. Thanks to, mostly, everyone for the kind words, support, and advice. A lot of the common questions people have asked 
have been answered on my original post which you can read on my comment history if you're interested point for the handful of people who are calling me an idiot or a cuck and whatever other fun names you thought up just because I didn't flip a switch in my head and immediately remove this person from my life or because I tried to work through it with her to see if this relationship could be saved. It's a lot harder than you think. I wish it were that easy but it's not. I'm going to turn 35 this year and we've been together for 17 years. We have a 6 year old child who does not understand what's going on. I really hope none of you find yourself in the position I was put in, but I can guarantee you wouldn't be able to snap your fingers and move on either, so save your snarky bullshit. You don't just wake up one day and decide every feeling you've had for the love of your life and the mother of your child is gone. It's taken me some time, and I'm slowly moving on, but I'd be lying if I said I still didn't care about her. There are times when we are doing things together with my son and I have to remind myself that we are not together anymore. It's hard, and it probably will be for a very long time. This happened to me with my dad, but he kept on going and it drove me nuts many many years ago. When I was 23 I married a widow who was pretty as can be. This widow had a grown up daughter who had hair of red, and my father fell in love with her, and soon they too were wed. This made my dad my son-in-law and really changed my life for now my daughter was my mother, because she was my father's wife. To complicate the matter, even though it brought me joy I soon. The father of a bouncing baby boy point my little baby then became a brother-in-law to dad, and so he became my uncle though it made me very sad. For if he were my uncle, that would also made him brother of the widow's grown up daughter who was of course my stepmother. My father's wife then had a son who kept them on the run, and he became my grandchild for he was my daughter's son. My wife is now my mother's mother and it makes me blue because, although she is my wife she's my grandmother too point now, if my wife is my grandmother then I'm her grandchild, and every time I think of that it nearly drives me wild. Because now I have become the strangest case you ever saw as husband of my grandmother I'm my own grandpa. My parents are actually step-siblings. They began dating when they were teenagers, and when their parents met they fell in love and got married, making my mom and dad step-siblings. They ended up moving in together, since they were both still living with their parents and my grandparents just let them share a room. It's always been a joke in our family that my mom is my aunt, my dad is my uncle, and my brothers are my cousins. Edit, grandma laugh out loud edit too, my grandparents didn't fall in love until after my parents had started dating and my parents broke up after becoming step siblings, but not before my mom got pregnant with me. Both of my brothers are half brothers, so I'm the only one in this predicament. My parents haven't been together for 23 years, but they are still step siblings to this day. Point edit 3. Here's a fun little story. Since this is blowing up point my parents broke up before finding out that my mom was pregnant with me. One of my half brothers is only 2 months younger than me. Once my brother's mom became pregnant she moved into my dad's room, causing my dad to have to live with two separate women both pregnant with his babies at the same time. The whole situation was messed up. Oh god, this is just bad point okay, so, it wasn't my sibling, but a step cousin on my stepfather's side of the family. There is a group of kids and a group of us all around the same age. Whenever he have get togethers, we teens always hung out until recently, when we joined the adults, but I was 15, during my sexual peak I guess you could say, and we all decided to play truth or dare. Now, for context, I joined their lives after they were already 12 or so, and I was the only white guy. I was more their best friend of sorts than a relative, and I had been previously caught checking out one of the girls on the last visit. In my defense, she had worn a tight dress at that time which showed off her assets so the two other guys naturally made me kiss her. For their own reasons I suppose. Me and her kinda had the same expression of okay then, game on, so. We did it. We were the two bouncy ones of the group, and usually didn't back down from a challenge. Everyone did their hoots, and when it was her turn, they told her to make out with me for 5 minutes again, same mutual non-spoken agreement, and that happened. This escalated until it got to them handing us a condom, and saying go into the other room and smash. There was a mild hesitation, but we both 
again, just non-verbally said fuck it, and, so that happened. Solid 8 tenths. We agreed never again, and to never speak of it point at it, a word. So I wasn't the one who slept with my own relative, but I was involved in a situation point my childhood friend, Reba, was in love with this dude Greg. Greg was a typical American dude, average looks, liked football, school, girls repeat. Reba was gorgeous 12 tenths handily, would totally risk TMJ for her, if you catch my drift. The issue was though, that she was boring as fuck. Favorite color? White. Favorite food? Iron kids bread. Just so faking dull. Thus, not many people were into her and I'm not talking just romantically. She had few friends, and no dates and no Greg. So one day, Reba and I are walking home from school and we see Greg on her front steps. Reba is shaking with excitement, anticipation. She's probably thinking hash this is my moment or some sheet. We reach Greg and Reba can't faking talk, so I ask him what he's doing there. He looks straight at Reba and asks, did you know that our parents were faking? She did not. Fast forward some months and their parents get married, and they all move in together. Reba gives up the dream of Greg, because pseudo family and all that. Life goes on and everyone kind of just goes with it. The three of us become friends and figure out we have stuff in common. We are cordial to one another at school, etc. So senior year starts, and my stupid bisexual as catches feelings for Reba. She's no longer talking about Greg all the time. So I'm learning more about her as a person and she's kinda dope in addition to being Ella's a dush coo. SP. Hot. We get trashed off of Smirnoff Ice and I make a move and she faking goes for it. Maybe it's hormones. Maybe it's the genuine love of friendship. But something carries us out of friendship and into running with scissors. We are going at it all the time. My hands are barely on anything that's not a boob. Naturally, one day, our horny little as get down to it somewhere we shouldn't, and Greg catches us. Now Reba is sufficiently interesting to him. No one would care if either of us is queer, but it's high school god it, so we are trying to just, like, avoid the convo. Greg promises to keep his trap shut. Time passes. It's winter break and someone has a party. Small towns, what you gonna do? Greg and Reba, and I are all going. We play flip cup and quarters and beer pong, and never have I ever. I'm sitting in between the two of them, and not surprisingly I'm experienced va- Jinna feelings. They're both touching me, we are all tipsy but not drunk, I know it's about to go down. Reba and I run off to find a room, and start making out. Greg finds us a few minutes later, and sits next to us on the bed. I'm all in at this point. So I start kissing Reba again, and Greg just watches, Loki stroking himself through his jeans. I catch on and pat a spot on the bed closer to us, which he settles into. I take one of my hand and replaces, unzipping his jeans, while my other hand is in Reba's bra. The rest just kind of comes together. We have a great time, and no combination of coupling is overlooked. It's a magical night for all. We leave our friend's house, and all go back the Greg and Reba's. Reba passes out, but I can't sleep. I run into Greg in the kitchen, and we get to talking. He says that he will never forget tonight and he's always been into me. I ask about Reba and he says, yeah that was weird, but she is so hot though. He knows that she should be off limits, so he plans to make sure this was a one time thing with her. We talk and have a good rhyme, and then we end up faking in his room, and passing out together. I wake up the next morning, and hear some weird sounds. I look over, and Reba is but as naked, bouncing on her stepbrother's dick. So much for a one time thing. I know I shouldn't be pissed, because I'd just been where she is, but I didn't like what I saw. I knew she was going to catch feelings, and it would be a real goddamn problem. I was right. She was even more in love with him after that. Reba would go on and on about how he was the one. Greg was not feeling the same, but he was a teenage boy with an eager sech partner 10 feet away. They went at it like rabbits until graduation. I hoped up with each of them off and on, but not together. That would have been too weird. They went to separate colleges and I went to the same school as Greg. We didn't date or anything else at that point, but I heard stories from girls who dated him about how close he was with his family, and how he'd go home all the time to be with them, and it was so cute. I knew the truth though, he was going home to bang his sister. 
Midway through college, Reba got pregnant. Greg wanted to bail, but couldn't because they were faking family. Baby is born, and as the kid grows up, he looks just like Greg. The parents figure it out, and all hell breaks loose. They kick the kids out, and refuse to talk to them for a year or more. Greg shows up at my dorm trashed in senior year of college. One more time for old time's sake. Reddit, I'm not a smart, whoa, man. We have a great night and I never see him again. Last I heard Reba's an astrophysicist Greg is a stay at home dad to their three kids. I match with him on Tinder regularly. Edit 1249 est, damn, fam. Thanks for the love. Some responses to some questions, in no particular order, true story. I was the stereotypical horny bisexual when I was a teenager. This was one of my formative experiences with faking for sure 1A. I did write some decent angsty erotica as a teen 1B. There is more to Reba's story. It's much like you slash Michelle LaBelle frames in her back cover blurb. Not sure how I'll share, but I'll find a way soon point names have been changed, but Reba was her cat's name point Greg is a cheating hoe. Per small town, gossip, Reba knows but doesn't care she's wrestling with her 20 something female lab assistant and living the dream. It's a good old fashioned American stay together for the tax breaks situation. I faking love you thirsty bastards. I slept with two of my stepsisters. My mom had been dating a guy for about 10 years. I had met one of his daughters when I was in high school years ago when we all went on a family vacation. Let's call her sister hash one. I had a feeling she liked me. Playing footsie under table, etc. but nothing came of it and I never saw her again until I was in college. Point one day I'm stuck in a part of town real late after the train stop running. No way to get home I remember my mom's boyfriend lives around there. I walk to his house, only his daughter is home. Mind you we're both about 21 now, she lets me in, and we start hanging out and drinking. One thing leads to another and we fack. At some point her father came home, but he didn't say anything, and just went to bed. Second story is about the sister of the girl mentioned above. Let's call her sister hash 2 we went to the same college. She was a year ahead of me, and was supposed to be my mentor. I ended up messing around with all her friends from the dorms because I was cute little brother, but she was always just big C's. Fast forward 2 years later we are at a house party at the sister hash 1 apartment. After a night of drinking it winds down and everyone leaves. Sister hash 1 goes into her room with her boyfriend. So sister hash 2 and me are alone in the living room talking. The drunk me starts asking about her old friends and the conversation turns sexual somehow. Then we start kissing and make our way to a spare bedroom. We fact no one ever knew. We did it a few other times after that too. My relationship with them is great. My mom and their dad got married not long after. I hang out with them and treat them like my sisters. The only awkward moment was at a family cookout when I got drunk and sat in front of them both and said you know I faked both of you right. Yes. I think I may have had a drinking problem. I dated my, I believe it was third cousin once removed or something like that for about 6 months. We had already been exclusively dating for like a month when I mentioned my great great grandfather who was a tiny bit famous in my state and he knew exactly who I was talking about, which is not normal. Turns out it's because that guy was also his great great grandfather I freaked out and asked my mom about her family history. He asked his mom point great great grandfather was a polygamist. I came from one wife and he came from another. It was weird, but not weird enough to stop. I remember going to his grandmother's house for Thanksgiving, located in the area that aforementioned GG grandfather was famous for, and marveled at how similar it was to my own grandma's house. Point thanks Mormons edit. I forgot I have another story. I dated someone for 5 years. We got engaged, and he ended our relationship via ML 7 weeks before the wedding. He's a total piece of shit. But we were also distantly related. We both are descended from Samuel Adams I thought it was hilarious. He was horrified and reconsidered our relationship. The discovery was made while we eating German pancakes, so I will now forever associate that memory with German pancakes, haha. <laughs> my parents separated when I was very young and I had been living with my father who wasn't seeing anyone. 
My mom had remarried by the time I started high school, and where she lived was a really good school district, so my parents agreed that I would start living with her. My stepsister was 2 years younger than me, and we didn't really get along too great, so we mostly avoided each other. Point the first 2 years went by without any incident whatsoever. This was back in 96 feet, and we only had one computer, which was in my room. As a teenage boy navigating the early internet you can imagine what I was getting up to in my room with the computer. The thing was, since she just started high school, sometimes my stepsister needed to use the computer too. I didn't have a lock on my door, and she would just barge in, sometimes catching me mid-spank. Of course I would scramble to cover up and close the windows on the computer I had open. But you could totally tell what I was doing. Like I said, we didn't get along. So rather than any wild cheat happening, she would yell at me, tell me I was gross, and even parade around the house telling my mom and stepdad what I was doing up there. They didn't care or say anything to me about it, but I was mortified, so I tried to be more discreet and only do that late at night. I thought I was getting away with my late night spanking, but it turned out my stepsister knew how to check browser history, which back then didn't even occur to me. The same thing would happen, after she'd use the computer, she'd run around calling me disgusting and telling everyone that my history was full of born. It pissed me off and embarrassed me, but what could I do? One day we were hanging out playing a game on the computer, which was pretty rare for us to do together. It was some game kinda like life, where each player gets a turn trying to get a better job and make more money and stuff. It was actually a pretty great night for us, because we were having fun playing this game and watching Jumanji on VHS and actually getting along well. I left to go downstairs and get a snack, and when I came back up she had pulled up the born site I frequented. I don't remember the site, but it was just text links that took you to pictures, because that's all we had back then. I ran over and yelled at her and tried to close the window, but she just started laughing and told me she wanted to look at it. I was super embarrassed, but she wasn't really insulting me about it, just casually commenting on the pictures and saying the people in them were weird or whatever. Eventually I relaxed, and we both just casually went through the pics commenting on dumb sheet like people's haircuts, or whatever. It was totally making me horny, but absolutely nothing happened aside from looking, and we eventually just closed it point after that I started thinking about her sexually, and I would fantasize about her. Our relationship got better, and we would hang out a lot more watching movies in my room, playing games on the computer, and going through born pictures laughing together for hours late at night just making fun of them, or saying if they were hot or gross. We started doing this more regularly, watching a movie in my room, or playing on the computer, and it always led to looking at born. At one point she noticed that I was casually touching my dick through my jeans and rubbing it, and she told me to put a blanket over myself if I was going to do that. I did, and at first I was just rubbing my dick through my jeans with the blanket over me, but it didn't take long before I took it out under the blanket and quietly jerked off to the bourne. Within a week we were both sitting next to each other looking at bourne late into the night and each masturbating under a blanket. I would go to the bathroom when I had to come because it still felt really weird and we were trying not to acknowledge what we were doing. I don't remember how long it went on like that or who first came up with the idea but eventually we invented going hands free. We'd make a bet that if the next picture had a girl who was a blonde, a guy with a tattoo or something like that then she would have to jerk me off or I'd finger her. After that we stopped hiding under blankets and I no longer left the room to come and would just do it right there. The thing is, we never kissed or did anything intimate at this point. It was really robotic hand stuff and that's it. I think we were trying to fool ourselves into thinking that if it didn't feel intimate, it was just like touching yourself, but better one night we stole some booze from our parents liquor cabinet and watched Happy Gilmore in my room. Neither of us had ever really gotten drunk before, and we really overdid it. At some point during the movie we started kissing each other, then our clothes came off, and then we tried to have sex. Honestly, it's a bit of a blur, but I couldn't even get my dick inside of her, because I had no idea what I was doing, and was too drunk to even focus. We ended up going down on each other, but before I could even finish I ran to the bathroom, and started puking from drinking too much. 
The next day we both pretended that we couldn't remember what happened because we drank too much. I was really freaked out about the whole thing and we didn't hang out again for a while point eventually we started watching movies together again and looking at Born together again too, but instead of daring her to jerk me off, if both people were fully naked in the picture that loaded, or whatever. I dared her to blow me. We would go back and forth like that a few, with me going down on her, or her blowing me. Then one day we watched some other movie, and stole more booze. We barely drank anything, and I think we were both just pretending to be drunk as an excuse, but we started making out, which led to undressing. We got down on the floor, and started to 69, but then she turned around, and started kissing me. My dick was right against her bussy, and I just rubbed it back and forth, until it slid in. I said something weird like, oh sorry, I didn't think that would happen, but she was already grinding into it, so I went with it. After a few seconds she got off of me and said she wanted to lay down, so I got on top of her and faked her on the floor of my bedroom. I probably lasted a minute and I pulled out and came on her stomach, then apologized for it and ran away to the bathroom not knowing what to do. I jumped in the shower and when I came back she had gone to bed in her room. The next day we both said we drank too much and couldn't remember anything, but after that the floodgates were open and we kept doing the same thing over and over. We'd pretend to get drunk, fuck, and then say we remembered nothing. It wasn't long before all of the fake drinking stopped and we just started faking all the time. She'd come into my room and just pounce on top of me saying she wanted to fuck or I'd pester her to get off the phone with her friends and come blow me. It was happening every day, sometimes multiple times a day, and our parents didn't know a thing. We were so dumb and reckless, and never even used condoms, as I would always just pull out point this went on for the rest of the time I was in high school, even when we each had been dating and faking other people. There was never anything romantic about it, we were just using each other to get off and have fun. Eventually I went away to college, and for the first year nothing happened, even when I came home. Then the next Christmas break I came home, and one day we were talking about how we used to fuck all the time. I told her that talking about it was making me really horny, and she said it was making her horny too, so we ran up to her room and faked again, and kept faking that whole Christmas break. I tried to start things up one Christmas after college had ended for me, and she was back home, but she turned me down, because she was in a serious relationship. Now we are both married, and she even has a kid. I think about those times for jerk off material now and then, but genuinely wouldn't dream of rekindling that sort of relationship with her. We've talked about it all because she was worried I might have feelings for her or something, but we both realized that it was never anything like that. We were just horny kids getting off with someone else attractive who was around, and there's nothing wrong with that. We also agreed never to tell anyone about it throw away for obvious reasons my father passed away when I was 16. I won't get into details why, but my mom and dad were happily married. My mom moved on relatively fast which kind of messed me up a little bit. I was super confused as to how. Anyway, my mom, let's call her Laura, met a guy named let's say Joe. Joe was cool, nice and very respective. He had a daughter whose name was Lexi. Point Lexi was 16 as well as I was at the time, and we got really close because her mother had passed away due to similar circumstances. We got very close and I eventually developed a crush on her. I didn't think too much of it because it wasn't technically my stepsister. One night we got pretty drunk in my room and we kissed. It was a long night after that. We even started making out. The next morning she came and had the talk with me, and it was super uncomfortable to say the least point it turns out she had similar feelings and that same day we hooked up. I was her first, and she was mine. And it felt amazing, physically and mentally, I felt like I loved this girl, and I did. We secretly dated for about a year until our parents announced they were getting married. This left us with another weird conversation. Should we stay together? Should we come out and say that we've been dating? All of the questions. We loved each other after all. First love, etc. We decided to just leave it to future us. Well, when that time came, we tried to keep going. Even if we told them we had been dating, it still would have been weird point a few months into their marriage, we broke it off. 
We were very sad and felt like we couldn't tell anyone. We couldn't. And we had to deal with it on our own. It was sad. And to this day, two years later, there's still some awkward tension between us. I moved out and so did she. We only ever speak during family gatherings and on Facebook. Finally my moment to shine point a hem point. So my mom was dating this guy she met on match.com around the time that I was 15 years old. His name was Stan and his daughter was faking hot point my mom and and Stan had been dating for about 3 months before I met her. He lived about 2 hours away so he usually came up on the weekends to visit. I actually met Stan Jr. his son a few weeks prior. Him and I hit it off so they thought why not get the whole family together. So the next weekend we went on a family trip to a casino where I met her and Stan's younger son. Upon entering the hotel room she decided it was necessary to proclaim that she gets whatever bed I'm sleeping. Her brother doesn't think this is weird at all which should have been my first sign. We end up having a fun night, sleeping in the same bed with mild innocent contact throughout the night. The next day when they left and we went home I was devastated. This is the first girl to show any kind of sexual interest in me. I'm obsessed. Over the next 8 months Stan and my mom would continue to date. He would bring his kids to our house for the weekend and we would all sleep in my room. Her brother on the floor and her in the bed with me. Often. Nobody questioned this. We started messing around pretty regularly at this point. Making out and hand stuff mostly. One night we were awake really late watching music videos. Her brother was asleep on the floor and it just happened. She looked at me, I looked at her, and then I pulled my teenage piece out, and she stuck it in. It was dope. I did my thing, and then instantly leaned over the bed, to make sure Stan Jr. was still sleeping, only to see his traumatized eyes wide open staring at the TV. He looked sad, like he wanted to cry. I kept that part to myself, and let the night ride itself out. Enter two weeks later, when my mom tells me that Stan has proposed, and they are getting married. I wasn't upset or even care much until my friends, who I had obviously bragged to, started making fun of me for faking my sister. This carried on for about 3 more weeks until Stan Jr. told his dad what me and his sister had been up to. He broke up with my mom the next day and asked for the ring back point and that's how I lost my virginity. Growing up I knew two sisters who would fool around at parties. One was a little older than the other, so I always assumed the younger one did it to be included, and the older one did it for attention. I knew their oldest sister pretty well, and she always shrugged it off, because they never went further than making out and light groping. She was way more reserved than the other two, but all the girls dealt with some level of abnormal sexual energy, it's just that for her it was more of a shy curiosity point I knew the younger sisters well enough to end up being the one they'd call to pick them up from parties, gone bad because they knew I always looked out for their older sister in school, and I wouldn't tell their parents the trouble they got into. Which eventually meant they confided in me about some things here and there, mainly with their struggle to understand guys their age, and navigate the hormonal fools. Hence why I sometimes had to pick them up from parties gone bad, meaning sausage fests, where they felt uncomfortable point by the time the older of the two was graduating I learned they actually did a whole lot more behind closed doors than just making out and light groping. They were close enough in age to have shared a bedroom and been best friends most of their childhood, and they were a lot alike, so they were inseparable. Two extremely curious girls with little understanding of sexual norms staying together and being as close as conjoined. Twins is a weird cocktail of hormones and naivety. So things happened over the years until it became commonplace for them and kept happening till their late teens honestly. To this day they both are easily categorized as two of the most drop dead gorgeous women I've ever personally known in my entire life. So it's almost like some strange taboo born fantasy, except that they are not exactly cliche born sludged types. I mean they were a little loose with the sex between each other, and obviously enjoyed showing off, but they weren't actually sludged apart from that. Seriously, they both remain virgins till their late teens or early twenties aside from fooling around with each other. It's this weird concoction of curious sexuality and vanilla reserved attitudes all in one for both of them, and it would totally seem like a contradiction until you met them.
it's hard to explain. Point one is married with two kids and works as a makeup artist for television and movies now, and the other is a structural engineer who ended up becoming a high school math teacher because that was the kind of job she always wanted. Unfortunately the oldest sister who was far more reserved overall ended up going through a lot and having what I'd call a mental breakdown and she has a shaky relationship with the rest of the family now. So I made a throwaway to answer this because I actually have point jack and I are technically full legal siblings I was adopted as a toddler. He's our parents biological child. So we are 0% genetically related, but were raised together by the same two parents in the same household I have never been treated differently for being adopted, and my brothers consider me their full sister, just as much as they consider each other to be their full brothers. We are not quite a full year and a half apart in age I'm older. Our older brother, also our parents biological child, is a year older than me, but he is not particularly part of this story. So when I say younger brother I'm not talking about a kid I'm talking about someone who is essentially my age and we were always even in the same grade because I was held back due to speech difficulties and trouble reading. I have some minor learning issues as well as being hard of hearing. Our family is very close to the point where we were teased about it as children but not physically affectionate except for my little brother and me. We constantly cuddled as children which I think probably helped me a lot. I was adopted as a toddler because I entered foster care out of a hellish situation, and while I don't actively remember my abuse from my birth family, I know it really affected me, especially in the early years, when my parents, foster parents at the time, first took me in, I bonded with the dog first, and then with my little brother, we think it's because Jack was a baby, and therefore non-threatening. I bonded with my parents eventually, but that took more time point, so the fact that Jack was always so affectionate and protective toward me was a really good thing for both of us the only two touchy feely people in a family of stoic New England wasps got to stick together, right, our parents always assumed the bond between my brothers and me, and especially between Jack and me would turn to the usual sibling bickering and squabbling. But that was never really the case. The boys would fight with each other, slam doors kick each other out of the room they shared, etc. But I being the typical middle child, I suppose kept the peace. When our older brother would kick Jack out of the room after a bad argument, he would end up in bed with me, not in a weird way, we'd just cuddle and fall asleep, usually with him as the big spoon. Also, I used to have nightmares, and he would come sleep with me then too, to help me fall asleep. Again, not weird, just sweet. Of course we did the, I assume this is pretty normal. Show me yours, and I'll show you mine kind of stuff, but what was less normal, I guess, was that our curiosity about each other's bodies persisted into puberty point as we got to late elementary slash early middle school, Jack would sometimes pop a bonner while we cuddled, and it never bothered me. I'll spare you too many details, but this pretty quickly developed into us figuring out that he could solve the problem by grinding against me, and that if he did it a certain way, it felt really good for me too. This evolved into touching each other all over in order to try and stimulate each other it felt very innocent at the time, not dirty, I don't remember ever feeling dirty about it, or feeling like it was wrong. Just that it was a secret point we had penetrative pivsetch for the first time, when he was 14, and I was 15 we were in 8th grade maybe the summer before 9th. I was on birth control already due to severe cramps. We had been manually stimulating each other during some of our cuddle sessions for a few years at that point, and rubbing genitals together, to bring one another to orgasm, but Jack wanted to try the real thing. We waited until our parents went out of town for a few days our grandmother was dying, and mom and dad were out of state helping get her affairs in order. My brothers and I were 16, 14, and 15, and our oldest brother had just gotten his conditional license, so leaving us home alone was no big deal, especially since we knew all our neighbors and had people to check in on us. Plus, we were pretty responsible kids they knew they could count on us to actually attend school every day, not throw our ager, keep the house clean, etc. for a few days, and to call a neighbor or friend's parent if we needed anything. Our first full day on our own was a Saturday. Our older brother went out to dinner and a movie with his then girlfriend, now wife, leaving Jack and me at home. He ended up sleeping over at her place, which he was expressly forbidden from doing. 
but we kind of had a feeling he would, and there was no way we were going to knock on him. As it turns out, our older brother lost his virginity that night too, in the back of my now sister-in-law's car, but that's another story. The first time was actually pretty good for a first time. We ended up doing it twice that night, and again in the morning before our older brother returned from his own night of teenage passion. It wasn't awkward, this was Jack, who had held me in his arms almost daily for our whole lives. This was the person I loved most in the world, and would do anything for. He was a sensitive attentive lover still is. I felt cared for and loved. And it felt extremely natural. We have a deeply empathic bond anyway, and are highly sensitive to each other in any context, but it is magnified significantly in bed. Edit, adding this because it feels important to say. I don't remember our first time as being a flurry of passion or hormones, or even particularly of sexual attraction. This is difficult to describe to someone who has not experienced it, but it felt like a natural progression of the way we had always shown each other love physical affection. We had both experienced passion fueled sex with people to whom we were attracted, and both agree that kind of sex driven by attraction and sexual desire feels very different from what we do with each other as siblings. The next morning, our brother came home and told us all about the loss of his virginity. He described a hormonal, passionate, fumbling, awkward encounter between two virgins in the back of a car a more typical teenage experience point we had a sexual relationship until we graduated and have had some isolated incidents since then. We are now 28 and almost 27, both divorced, for reasons unrelated to our relationship his wife was unfaithful and my husband was, a story for another day, and still occasionally express love sexually. More important than that, though, we are still very loving and caring to each other as much, if not more so than, before we began to have sex. When his ex-wife left him, he came and stayed with me for a few months, and I helped care for his infant son, as I was out of work at the time. When I needed help moving one state over for grad school in the fall of last year, he took time off of work to move me. We really love each other, and I would say the erotic love is the least important part of that love. If anything, it only bolsters what was already there, and is much more important, the love we feel as siblings and lifelong best friends I hope that answers your question. I'm open to respectful follow up questions from op or anyone else point much love, A. My dad remarried, when I was in high school. I lived with him. My stepmom had a daughter Mary who was a year older than me. She was at a different school, but still in my district point my dad had been divorced for a couple of years when they got married, but Mary's mom had only been widowed for about 6 months. Mary wasn't happy about her mom moving on so soon, and wasn't shy about letting her mom and my dad know how she felt. I mean, I thought it was pretty messed up too, but my dad seemed happy at the time. Mary and I started hanging out when she transferred to my school. We went everywhere together, partly because I had a car and partly because we liked a lot of the same stuff. Like drinking, smoking weed and occasionally more. Our parents thought it was great we got along so great, even if neither of us cared much for our parents relationship point when summer came around, we had a lot more free time, and it wasn't unusual for us to crash in each other's room after watching a movie or whatever. We started fooling around after a trip to my dad's cabin too, as we told our parents, hang out in nature leaving out the part where we planned to eat mushrooms and trip our brains out point the first night we tripped, and when we touched just casually, it was intense. We both liked it, so we touched more and more just getting deeper and deeper into it as we peeked, eventually winding up naked in the bed faking as we came down. The rest of the time at the cabin was more of the same. Tripping and intense sensual sex point after that, we screwed every chance we got point until just after Thanksgiving, when we got caught by her mom. It was like a nuclear bomb for our parents relationship point Mary and her mom moved out. We still saw each other at school, but it wasn't the same. They tried family therapy, couples therapy and sent us to therapists, but what we'd done had broken everything. Our parents divorced. Mary and her mom moved across the country and I moved out shortly after graduation. From aged around 9 to 10, my sister, cousin, F, and myself, M, had become fascinated with each other's privates. We would constantly make up new games that somehow involved showing or touching their in some fun way point after a year or 
so we progressed it to locking ourselves in a bedroom doing like stripteases and all sorts of stuff we'd secretly seen on late night TV for example. And by the way there hadn't been any real penetration up to this stage, only minor with usual girl things like hair brushes etc. For almost two years we played various games in the bedroom, bushland and attic. I had grown quite a lot by this time, and so had the girls' curiosity. Most games now were made up by the girls, and seemed to be centered around my uncontrollable erections. They were so fascinated by it, and I liked the attention, that we'd even play around in the back seat of the car, stuff like take my hand and touch inside their panties, and see how quickly I become erect, then a shy kinda giggle, to mask their newfound feelings of excitement. By the age of 12 to 13 sleepovers and trips away were reaching new levels of naughtiness as our games were cleverly designed for our individual tastes. Forced to often share a bathroom shower, bedroom, and beds, we were always happily off to shower and bed early without any parental force. By natural instinct we created a number of bathtub and shower games which obviously involved lots and lots of touching our naked bodies. Once we are all satisfied with that, get into pajamas for the parents goodnight kiss before acing back for bedtime games. Pajamas were inevitably off as quickly as they were on, and we'd together jump into the closest bed, where our hands would go searching feeling all over our naked bodies. I can clearly remember how my curiosity was just extended by the amount of growth in the girls' breasts and nipples we continued creating suitable fun games through exploring our thoughts along the way, until we were age 15 to 16 point we are in our 30s now, yet we still happily bring up the topic with one another sharing in our favorite memories of those years. Cool I can share my entire childhood. So I was adopted by my aunt after my mom left my dad, and my dad went to jail, so the cops basically took me to my grandparents, and when my aunt found out she said she was waiting for this day, since I was born, because my parents were always fallen back on their ways, so I moved in, when I was 12 and my aunt had 3 girls. I was 12, the girl in question my first cousin was 11. We would pretend make out with each other, and I would hump her with clothes on like play, but like for real? Anyways, my aunt never cared or noticed, but when I was 14 me and my cousin had been sleeping with each other regularly just cuddling every night. No one cared. It was probably right before the age where I have to be responsible. So one night I got a boner, and I was like man this feels good up against her ass. I was spooning her with our clothes on and just smelling her hair. I just reached for her buttons and she started ramming her as up on me. So I pulled her pants down, and I didn't penetrate, but I rubbed it against her as for a good 22-30 pumps, and came on her. It was the first time I ever came, so I wasn't really sure what I was doing anymore, and just said goodnight. The next night I was trying to go for round 2, and laid beside her, and she said you can do what you did last night, but for some reason I felt ashamed of the activity, and it stopped happening. I think we ended up sharing our first kiss and held hands in bed for a weeks and eventually moved on point she lives with her dad in West Texas and it's illegal for cousins in Texas not to mention this was 15 years ago and were two separate lives now, but I still think if we were alone or whatever or single I mean I wouldn't have a problem with it whatsoever. My parents were foster parents and my mom had three kids from previous marriages, but her blood kids and my dad had one daughter from his previous marriage then they adopted three kids my brother me, and one other girl. Well one of my mom's sons was a real fuck up, and man ho who screwed everything literally had three to five different girls coming home every week with him. Then one day the other foster girl that was adopted, went to my mom and confessed. She had been sleeping with her son and was pregnant. Now my parents weren't very good parents at all, and my mom verbally abused her, and smacked her to convince her to have an abortion and she did I felt really awful about it, and got upset that she did it, and I remember my mom sitting me down, and saying that she couldn't have little bastards running around looking like her son. Then one year later my dad's daughter with whom I was very close to got really drunk, and she confessed she had lost her virginity to the same brother, and had been sleeping him, since she was 12. And she said she loved him, but he was literally dating two other girls at this time. I felt really bad for both of them, he was a sexual predator, even though there was only a 3 year age gap between. He even tried to seduce me at one point of living in that house I told him to fuck off. 
I eventually ran away from that house it was crazy bad. First of all just for some background, my mum died right when I was born. She was actually really really hot but this isn't about her. I guess that's faked up to say, but whatever. I actually grew up with my dad's family because my dad has all sorts of emotional issues and he bailed before I was born. So you can see, my childhood was really kind of messed up. Anyways, growing up I feel like there was always a lot of distance between me and my sister. When I was about 17 or 18 I first noticed that my sister was a hottie. I don't want to go into too many details about it, but basically what happened is that I accidentally found a video that she made of herself. I knew she didn't make it for me, but I thought she was so faking beautiful that I watched it twice. I probably would have watched it a hell of a lot more, except that like right around the time I found the video, all this crazy sheet went down and I had to leave home. My dad's family who I was staying with got in bad trouble with the law. I never talk about it. So, I was totally lusting after my sister at that point. She was also having bad trouble with the law. She was actually in custody when I left home. My friend and I went to go pick her up. When I saw her that day, after seeing the video, I have to be honest, I just wanted to fuck her brains out. Looking back on it now, it's pretty messed up, but I think she had feelings for me too. She actually kissed me right after we came to get her, and it wasn't a sisterly kiss, you know? I mean, it wasn't like ridiculously sexual or anything, but it definitely wasn't sisterly. After we left, we all went to crash with my sister's friends. T on the trip there, my friend sort of implied that he wanted to get with my sister, and I got a little jealous. He's a good looking guy, and even though she was my sister I just felt like he was competition. Not much else happened between us for a while, except some maybe sexy hugging. Pretty much everyone in my life at that point was wanted by the government, so we all moved around a lot. I'm not saying that I'm proud of it or anything, but it was kind of an awesome time point my friend and my sister never hoped up I don't think, but I thought there was some serious sexual tension going on between them. It was around that time that I got really badly hurt in an accident. It was faked up. I almost died point, but when I was in recovery my sister came to see me, and out of the clear blue sky she started, gives me this awesome, slow passionate kiss on the lips. Sadly, although, I guess for the best, nothing ever came of it point we spent some time apart, and I started to get really religious, so I tried not to think of her that way. It was actually going well for a long time, like I was totally over her. But I have to say, like a year or so after all that stuff went down, we were out sailing, not like a date or anything romantic like that, and she was wearing like the hottest bikini I've ever faking seen and it brought back all the old feelings. Sigh. A little while later she actually wound up with my friend from before, the sexual tension guy. I can't say I was surprised. But even after she was shacking up with my friend, there was one time we were at a party, my friend was inside, and my sister and I were outside alone point it was a really intimate moment. I think something might have happened, except that I killed the mood, when I told her that Darth Vader was our father, and that I had to go face him point at it, not mine but I wanted you to have a laugh too. This happened when I came back for Christmas. His eyes moved to the red ribbon she had planted on his right pectoral muscle. He saw something in her eyes when she touched him. A recognition of firmness. After all, he was toned to perfection from weeks of rebuilding a church in Rockaway, along the northern banks of the Great Scarces River. He had met a woman there who had reminded him of his sister. He cared for her, taught her a fledgling example of English, had even found himself feeling love for her. That was not a sisterly love however. Then again, was this? He began to open his mouth. Any moment his parents would walk downstairs. The look on her face said they were on the same channel. Everything he had just thought, she heard it. He spoke. Listen, when mom and dad go out to say hi to the Jelsons next door tonight, let's hang back, go upstairs and fack the sheet out of each other. What? She answered, bewildered. Mom, let's do it. Let's fack. Haven't we always wanted this? He reached out to reassure her. But she pulled away, fear in her eyes. Whoa whoa. I know I'm just happy you're home from Africa. What the hell are you talking about wanting to fuck me? 
are you serious, and like a blade being hammered on the anvil, his father's voice rang out from behind him, what in Sam Hill is going on here, I can explain. He stammered, but was cut off by the visceral scream from his mother as she began sobbing into her bathrobe. His father erupted, white morning spittle shooting from the corners of his mouth. No son of mine is gonna drink faking Folgers coffee. He belted his son in the face, knocking the boy unconscious. This is a Pete's coffee house, drink Pete's coffee. Went to a Christmas works party that insisted on couples dancing I was only there for the free food and drink, and got roped into this the couples dancing was hardly anything classy, and for the most part it bordered on making it look like such without it actually being such, and I got partnered with a girl I've worked with for a long enough while, but never really spoken to get to know each other better, she had been single for several years herself. So this didn't slow her down any. 3 to 4 months later one of my grandparents passes away due to old age and proceedings are going on, and who else do I see there, but the very same girl who did such but not such with me on a dancer floor, I talked to her in hopes of alleviating my fear and she's just the granddaughter of a family friend or something, nope, had to go, and be my damn cousin, that I had no clue even existed, let alone knew, had been working with for over a damn year. We were never really close at work and the party was definitely a one-time thing, but now even there's definitely no chance of building rapport. After finding another family member, after we had lost one point no one at work knows, and thankfully due to unnatural distance in the workplace anyway no one's aware of it, nor have they brought up the Christmas party again, and I will definitely not be going to this year's party. I, M, grew up in a semi-stable home, but had its share of difficulties. My full brother and I began back quote playing a game that we must have seen on TV or something where we were basically robotics on each other. We were very young, but as we got older it turned into me giving him head while he looks up born and him basically shoving his dick in my mouth while laying on top of me at night. He would either come in my mouth or on my face. One time I stuck one part of my dick in him, but he came right away, and we quickly stopped. We stopped having sexual contact. When I went into HS, he is two years older than me. I identify as gay now, and he identifies as straight point he developed a problem with alcohol that he is struggling with. I have my own issues that aren't substance related. We've never spoken about it, and I think he feels guilty. I shared this with one other person before just to get it off my chest, because I feel awful, like I ruined his life and that there is something inherently defective with me. I really love my brother, and think he's very smart, funny, and genuinely a good person I just wish things were more normal for us growing up, because then maybe he wouldn't have so many demons today. My half brother started touching me, when I was 4, he was 3 years older than me. This happened every summer for 5 years, because that was the only time we would see my half siblings. He would always make me suck his dick, I hated it, and he eventually stuck it inside me a couple times. He honestly was a awful brother to me. Constantly push me, hit me, would do all kinds of things, but for some reason, I still looked up to him, I still loved him. My parents even said they had to separate us a lot of the times, because either I would crawl into bed with him, or he would crawl into bed with me. My sister one time actually saw him on top of me, kissing me, and never said a thing about it point eventually, my parents divorced, and I never saw him, or my sister again. I was almost 13, when I told my mom everything. She started crying, and kept saying I should've known. I'm so sorry, sad. It definitely was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but I had to let it out, it kept eating at me every day. Our relationship wasn't really affected at first, we never talked, because I never saw him, and they didn't really get a hold of us anymore. It definitely affected my life, though, it still does I lost my virginity at 14. I never ever wanted to suck a dick ever again in my life. Now, being 21 and in a relationship of 3 years, I do it, and I enjoy it. But for a long time it was too much for me, I felt awful, but I didn't wanna relive those days. Between the ages of 18 to 19 I slept with 33 people. I'm not blaming him for me doing that, I blame myself. But I also had no self respect. I thought it was the only way people would want me. It was the only time people were nice to me, that's when my brother was nice to me. 
I would put myself in unhealthy situations and date people way older than me. Point I was in a bad place and I don't know if it's because I was molested as a child. I don't know. I do think about it often and get mad at myself for not speaking up sooner. I get mad I didn't stick up for myself. I get mad because he is happily married, living his best life while I'm trying to pick up the pieces of mine. We did not have such paresi, as there was no penetration, but the doctor game got a bit too far at some point. My sister was I think 10 at the time, and I was 13 I think. We didn't really knew what we were doing, just touching each other's private parts. When she was 17, she met her first boyfriend, and decided that she wanted to stop studying, and leave the family to go with him, which my parents didn't like very much. So they planned out some kind of leverage to get my family to emancipate her. Which included reporting my father to the eyes equivalent of my country for not paying all of his taxes as an artisan, reporting him for growing weed in the garden at some point, believe me on this, my parents are both very stable great persons, and we had a really good education, so they are not to blame in any of this, and last but not least, reporting me to the police for apping her, when she was a child point this has now been. Three years since she left my parents home, and we haven't heard a thing from her since, I'm still waiting for my trial, not allowed to leave my country until then, drowning in a Turner's fees. So yeah, I feel super guilty about splitting my family apart like this, my parents never asked anything, and never did anything wrong besides maybe not noticing this, but I feel responsible for driving her away, even if I think her junky boyfriend played a hefty role in this. I feel shitty every day for this, and I don't know if I will ever see slash talk to her ever again, which for the moment I'm not allowed to anyway point she isn't even presenting herself to the authorities, or responding to them, since they contacted the police, so it's basically me vs the state at this point in this case. I guess I'll toss some of my family trauma into the ring. Generational incest from a family I'm not blood related to tore my family apart when my mother got into a long term hostage situation with the tail end of it all. Mom attracted the attention of this absolute psychopath when I was really little. The guy managed to worm his way into our lives and eventually he and my mom had a kid together. He encouraged what I'll just describe as incredibly unhealthy boundaries. Let us watch really raunchy movies. He used to try and give me alcohol when I was like 7. Always made me bathe with my sister. Still don't know why we couldn't take baths and sleep separately when I would visit, but we always had to 1. Bathe together and 2. Sleep together in a very small twin bed. Only pajamas he gave me were t-shirts that stopped at my waist, so I would be forced to walk around in just my underwear. There was a period where he and my mom separated, but she'd send me over to visit my sister, and he'd do stuff like this whenever I and my sister was alone with him, but it wouldn't happen if mom was around. Anything that happened between me or my siblings happened when we were really young, and it was honestly more out of curiosity and I guess we all viewed it as like, not real, a game or mimicking what we saw adults doing in movies, and not understanding that's not how it works in reality. Nothing stemmed from it being sexual or lust driven. They were also fairly brief and happened a short while after one of us had extended, isolated contact with him. We may have also been unknowingly responding to the subtle grooming he was attempting because from what I read online, that's one way children act out in response to sexual abuse. It makes me so uncomfortable knowing an adult I trusted like a father took these natural curiosities children have and manipulated them to his own warp desires instead of instilling healthy boundaries and teaching us siblings aren't supposed to learn this from each other. Like how faking skeeved out would you be if you learned that a trusted adult was trying to make something pornographic out of your childhood vulnerability. I found out much later my mom had talked with his sister and their father was pretty abusive toward her. Incest seemed to be a common practice with them. I mentioned earlier it was generational with them. It definitely got out of hand shortly after we moved out of his place permanently. My brother tried to talk me into such. I was really young at the time and had no idea what it was. But my brother was too, far too young to have a genuine interest in such like a teenager would which is why I don't think it was completely him. He, my brother, told me to take my clothes off and lie down. 
when he took his off and tried to get on top of me I started crying and said I didn't want to do it. I do not blame my brother for trying something. I think he was just mimicking what he was being taught by a very sick man. There was never any attempt after and it was literally just the one time but it always stuck with me. We also didn't do it. As soon as he saw me crying he started crying, put his clothes on and immediately realized the gravity of what happened. I forgave him because I knew, if he was thinking this, it's obvious our sister's dad, not my B.O. dad to clarify, and I don't want to put names down for the sake of my fam's privacy, got to him too. I think me and my sister kissed when we were both really little. There was never inappropriate touching or anything like that. Like I said aside from the one memory of my brother nothing to that extreme at all. It also had very little impact on our relationship. If anything it made us stronger as we got older. For a time I resented my brother, avoided him but that faded as I grew up. I knew he regretted it, and I sympathize knowing what it's like, having a pervert imprint themselves on someone so young and unwitting. We survived this monster together, and we both also have an awesome biological dad who'd never do something like that. Also, her dad is in prison for possession of child pornography and attempted assault of a minor at his church. It affected my relationships w other people for a long time, like I couldn't be intimate with anyone and not feel immediate rage and disconnection from my surroundings after. I hated being touched and had a violently negative attitude towards such. I blame this all on my sister's dad. I think he's exactly where he belongs and hope he rots for what he did to my family. My brother had a massive drinking problem for years. My sister, who injured years of complete isolation with this man, has a flood of issues I'm not even gonna get into. We've all been deeply affected by his horrific actions. He was also physically abusive and tried to kill my mom several times in front of us. Which is why I describe it not as a relationship, but a hostage situation, because if my mom tried to leave, he'd push her down the stairs. I remember seeing her get out of the shower covered in bruises. Before you read this, please don't judge me. I'm just sharing my story because people asked, wow, okay, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to tell anyone about this, but it's late and I'm sleep deprived, so I guess I'll just write it now and regret it in the morning first of all. Just for some background, my mom died right when I was born. She was actually really really hot but this isn't about her. I guess that's faked up to say, but whatever. I actually grew up with my mom's family because my dad has all sorts of emotional issues and he bailed before I was born. So you can see, my childhood was really kind of messed up. Anyways, growing up I feel like there was always a lot of distance between me and my sister. When I was about 17 or 18 I first noticed that my sister was a hottie point I don't want to go into too many details about it, but basically what happened is that I accidentally found a video that she made of herself. I knew she didn't make it for me, but I thought she was so faking beautiful that I watched it twice. Probably would have watched it a hell of a lot more, except that like right around the time I found the video, all this crazy faking went down and I had to leave home. My mom's family who I was staying with got in bad trouble with the law. I never talk about it. So, I was totally lusting after my sister at that point. She was also having bad trouble with the law. She was actually in custody when I left home point my friend and I went to go pick her up. When I saw her that day, after seeing the video, I have to be honest, I just wanted to fuck her brains out. Looking back on it now, it's pretty messed up, but I think she had feelings for me too. She actually kissed me right after we came to get her, and it wasn't a sisterly kiss, you know? I mean, it wasn't like ridiculously sexual or anything, but it definitely wasn't sisterly. After we left, we all went to crash with my sister's friends. On the trip there, my friend sort of implied that he wanted to get with my sister, and I got a little jealous. He's a good looking guy, and even though she was my sister I just felt like he was competition. Not much else happened between us for a while, except some maybe sexy hugging point pretty much everyone in my life at that point was wanted by the government, so we all moved around a lot. I'm not saying that I'm proud of it or anything, but it was kind of an awesome time. My friend and my sister never hooked up I don't think, but I thought there was some serious sexual tension going on between them. It was around that time that I got really badly hurt in an accident. 
It was faked up. I almost died. But when I was in recovery my sister came to see me, and out of the clear blue sky she started, gives me this awesome, slow passionate kiss on the lips sadly, although, I guess for the best, nothing ever came of it. We spent some time apart, and I started to get really religious, so I tried not to think of her that way. It was actually going well for a long time, like I was totally over her. But I have to say, like a year or so after all that stuff went down, we were out sailing, not like a date or anything romantic like that, and she was wearing like the hottest bikini I've even faking seen, and it brought back all the old feelings. Sigh point a little, while later she actually wound up with my friend from before, the sexual tension guy. I can't say I was surprised. But even after she was shacking up with my friend, there was one time we were at a party, my friend was inside, and my sister and I were outside alone. It was a really intimate moment. I think something might have happened, except that I killed the mood when I told her that Darth Vader was our father, and that I had to go face him point. Before you read this, please don't judge me. I'm just sharing my story because people asked. Wow, okay, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to tell anyone about this, but it's late, and I'm sleep deprived, so I guess I'll just write it now, and regret it in the morning. First of all, just for some background, my mom died, right when I was born, she was actually really really hot but this isn't about her, I guess that's faked up to say, but whatever. I actually grew up with my mom's family because my dad has all sorts of emotional issues and he bailed before I was born. So you can see, my childhood was really kind of messed up point anyways. Growing up I feel like there was always a lot of distance between me and my sister. When I was about 17 or 18 I first noticed that my sister was a hottie. I don't want to go into too many details about it, but basically what happened is that I accidentally found a video that she made of herself. I knew she didn't make it for me, but I thought she was so faking beautiful that I watched it twice. Probably would have watched it a hell of a lot more, except that like right around the time I found the video, all this crazy faking went down and I had to leave home. My mom's family who I was staying with got in bad trouble with the law. I never talk about it, so. I was totally lusting after my sister at that point. She was also having bad trouble with the law. She was actually in custody when I left home. My friend and I went to go pick her up. When I saw her that day, after seeing the video, I have to be honest, I just wanted to fuck her brains out. Looking back on it now, it's pretty messed up, but I think she had feelings for me too. She actually kissed me right after we came to get her, and it wasn't a sisterly kiss, you know? I mean, it wasn't like ridiculously sexual or anything, but it definitely wasn't sisterly point after we left, we all went to crash with my sister's friends. On the trip there, my friend sort of implied that he wanted to get with my sister, and I got a little jealous. He's a good looking guy, and even though she was my sister I just felt like he was competition. Not much else happened between us for a while, except some maybe sexy hugging point pretty much everyone in my life at that point was wanted by the government, so we all moved around a lot. I'm not saying that I'm proud of it or anything, but it was kind of an awesome time point my friend and my sister never hooked up I don't think, but I thought there was some serious sexual tension going on between them. It was around that time that I got really badly hurt in an accident. It was faked up. I almost died. But when I was in recovery my sister came to see me, and out of the clear blue sky she started, gives me this awesome, slow passionate kiss on the lips sadly, although, I guess for the best, nothing ever came of it. We spent some time apart, and I started to get really religious, so I tried not to think of her that way. It was actually going well for a long time, like I was totally over her. But I have to say, like a year or so after all that stuff went down, we were out sailing, not like a date or anything romantic like that, and she was wearing like the hottest bikini I've ever faking seen, and it brought back all the old feelings. Sigh point a little, while later she actually wound up with my friend from before, the sexual tension guy. I can't say I was surprised point, but even after she was shacking up with my friend, there was one time we were at a party, my friend was inside, and my sister and I were outside alone. It was a really intimate moment. I think something might have happened, except that I killed the mood when I told her that Darth Vader was our father, and that I had to go face him. 
I never actually penetrated, but when really young me and my brother discovered our parents born discs, so we showed our cousins, and we had sex we just humped naked, but were too young to even understand what we were even doing. But I did got my first ever blue job by a cousin when I was very very shockingly young at it. Just to continue the story because it gets even more faked point what I said happened a long time ago and was here in the states. I moved to Mexico turned 12 and moved to the states again. When I turned 16 we visited the cousins who gave me and my brother our first ever BJ and hump naked needles. To say we were uncomfortable as hell, because we didn't keep in touch all those years we get there and everything seems normal, but quickly I noticed this cousin was getting ever so more close to our bodies the more we got to know each other, she would hug me all the time from behind and just purposely pushed her breasts every time she got close to me, even backing her ear to me several times it got a bit too far I'd say, when she grabbed my crotch and told me something along the lines of how she missed it and how she couldn't wait how big it had gotten, that I was doing a good job pretending nothing had happened, and holy fuck I just couldn't believe it. We were 16 and my cousin wanted to have unprotected sex right then and there, and we did which now meant I had lost my virginity having unprotected sex at 16 with my cousin point even worse we did it multiple times, until I moved back to my state, but now that we are much older we understood that it was faked, and we should have never done it, because it could have ended terribly. I should also say that when she was 19 she had sex with her stepbrother and ended up pregnant. She has a thing for family I guess. Throw away for reasons me and my cousin have always been close. Like second or third cousin. About the time I moved back to my hometown, both of us age 14, we started hanging out more. At first it was pretty innocent. Play guitar hero. Punching bag. Football stuff point his parents had a piece of property with a guest house where we would chill at. One day we were listening to music and just chilling. My older brother was already asleep on the couch. He turned the music off and it got quiet. It was like this for a good 5 to 10 minutes he reached over and put his hand on my thigh and started kissing me. At first I was in shock but it didn't really take long before I realized just how into it I was turned out the lights. Went to the other room took turns plowing each other with no regard to noise point years went on the entire time we continued giving each other routine prostate massages without using our hands now we are both in our mid-twenties the last time we used our inflatable poo jabbers on one another was just a couple years ago point we never talk both of us introverts but also because he's married and has a kid I don't doubt that, if we got in a room together alone, even today, we'd probably go to the bone zone point is it wrong? Yes. Do I regret letting the relationship get to this point? A little bit. I'm glad it happened, though, because I get to use this sweet username. I hoped up with my stepsister I was 16 at the time, a few years ago. Junior year of high school. I was pretty shy, but getting close to college, my parents pushed me to join a club to help me socialize, so I did what any shiny D guy would do, and joined the gaming club point now I'm thinking it's gonna be other shy nerds, neckbuds and lame koi girls, which it mostly was, but there was a cute girl in there too. I had seen her on campus before, but my friend Josh, who knew everyone, said she supposedly had a boyfriend at another high school. Beyond that and her name, Claire. I didn't know much about her anyways the first few months of the semester go by, and we didn't really talk much beyond club meetings. When the holidays got closer, my parents decided to host a Christmas party, and wanted it to be huge. Their friends came over to help set up, and talked a lot about their new neighbors coming to the party, and how it was just a single mom and her daughter who was a year younger than me point so of course, it was Claire. I was freaking out at this point but nothing I could do. I texted Josh, asking if he knew about Claire's dad, he hadn't heard of him, except he apparently had left them a long time ago. That evening, sure enough Claire and her mom came over. I was of course expected to entertain Claire all night. Since we both liked video games, we went back to my room to play something. After arguing over action adventure vs RPG, we decided to settle it in Super Mario World. Whoever could go the most levels without dying point after a couple hours, I gave up trying to beat someone clearly on my level. 
we started laying down and just talking about stuff. Eventually, I asked about her dad. She said it was kinda weird. She never met him, but felt like she had. She had this crumpled photo in her wallet of her dad, mom and herself as a baby, when she was born point I couldn't talk. The man in the picture, Claire's father, was my dad. I just looked at her, and sighed. I told her, Claire, I think you're so funny, and cool, and honestly really cute, but don't let that distract you from the fact that in 1998, The Undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell, and plummeted 16 feet through an announcer's table. Not sleep with, but he felt me up, while I was asleep. I had always wanted a brother, and was incredibly naive. I wasn't a virgin, but I wasn't a very socialized person. We moved every two to four years and I never had friends outside of school until about 15, when I had my first boyfriend. I was bullied everywhere we went, and still really don't have any concept of reading the room. So when my mother began dating a guy with two sons, when I was 15 one older, 22, and one younger, younger was never home, than me, I was thrilled. I always thought my life would have been so much better if I had a big brother to help me and teach me and keep me from getting bullied. I got along great with the older brother and told him how thrilled I was to have a brother. He asked for a kiss on the cheek regularly and I thought nothing of it being his little sister and since I had a boyfriend, clearly he couldn't mean anything by it. Yes, that naive. We would talk over aim. He would tell me he liked me as more than a friend, and I stupidly tried to be nice and let him down easy, saying that we were siblings and that wouldn't be right. I had no interest in him sexually, and thought I had the family I always wanted. My dad died at 4, I have all his talents and skills, and it was always just my mom and I, and she was rather detached and disinterested as it was. The dad was a nice guy and let me help around the house. I thought I finally had a complete family. As the months went on, the brother progressed to having me kiss him on the lips and stuck his tongue in my mouth a few times when we kissed. But surely he couldn't mean anything by that, right? He was the brother I always wanted, and it was great to have a family and I have a boyfriend, and he knows that. There are bad people, but surely not in my own house. One day, I came home on a school night, tired since my job kept me till 2am on non-school nights. My brother was on the couch and invited me to watch TV with him. I passed right out and woke up to him groping my boobs and crotch. I was in shock and disbelief. I kissed him on the cheek as I always did and headed to my room. I didn't come out all weekend. Of course, since this is the just world, my mom told me it was my fault for leading him on and I became a pariah in my own house. The dad and younger son bullied me. The brother got into heavy drugs, stole from my mom and I regularly, even took hinges off of our locked doors to get street art possessions. He ended up in jail a couple times, now leads a cushy life going to meetings every day at an office job. Now for me, I would love to love my in-laws, they are the nicest people I have ever met, but there is a wall in my head where I can't love anyone unless I'm okay with the possibility of them touching me. I'm a cold beach to everyone but my husband, and look forward to the next junior who comes around, so I can put an ice hole in their head on the spot, just for that grooming faker sorry for the wall of text. Oh I got this. Okay so when I was 18 my dad met a woman with an 18 year old daughter. My dad moved fast, and moved the woman in within 2 months of meeting her, and 3 months later, I was informed that her 18 year old daughter would be moving down to Florida to live with us. After meeting her, we hung out a bit, and one day she asked me to smoke with her, I hate smoking, because I immediately throw up, especially with blunts. I said no and she persisted, we were joking about it, and out of nowhere she's, like I'll suck your dick, if you smoke with me. So of course. I immediately smoked. She blew me, and that was that point fast forward 6 months I'm dating her friend and my stepsister. Parents got married, started shooting Raxacadone. I had never used an opiate, and she offered me one. I begged off, but she pulled the same stunt. She said that it makes such last longer, and I would feel great, so if I took a half of a 30mg pill we could fuck all night. So of course, I took it threw up all over, and felt like Jesus walking on water. We ended up hoking up, and continued to do so, whenever opiates were involved. 
Looking back, I feel like she introduced me to them to get me hooked, so I would buy them all the time and give them to her so we could have drug fueled sex. Eventually I became addicted to opiates and she'd got bad. We would get in big fights in front of our parents and I would scream that's why I faked you beach. Which mortified her mother. Anyways, eventually both of us got sober and quit sleeping together and everything was great. That was until 2 years ago, she had 4 months sober and met a drug dealer who gave her fentanyl and she overdosed and died. He left the body on a bed for 24 hour before calling the police. We met the when she came to visit her dad for Christmas one year, which happened to be the same Christmas I went to visit my mother. This would also be the first time I had met my mom's new boyfriend point she had a boyfriend at the time, and I guess I didn't care. We got along so well we caught the feels, and we started to fool around. After Christmas she went back to Montana, and I went back to California, but we stayed in touch. That summer we met up again, and began faking each other's brains out for the rest of the season. We ended up moving in together about 2 years later, lived together for about 2 years, and then we broke up. We were both half-baked people, and we had some really great times together, but also really, really faking bad times she is with one of the guys she cheated on me with still. Two years later, living the life she most desperately didn't want to fall into. Meanwhile, I'm in a polyam relationship with two amazing people, living the life she wanted. We don't really talk. We see each other once a year, when I visit my mom for the holidays. I'm still really hurt about the way things ended, and I now can see the ways I helped mess that relationship up. I hope she's happy, but also I just want sweet karma to slap her until she feels what she did to me. I'm conflicted. My parents were never married and separated before I was one. I grew up with my mom, who went on to marry my stepdad and have two more boys. My dad lived his life and found a woman and had a daughter and a son. Making me the oldest of all five. Growing up the relationship I had with my father's other children was distant at best. The only connection I had with them was the shared grandparents. My sister is 5 years younger than me. Point. When I turned 12 my stepfather went active duty and my family was moved across the country for his station. I lost contact with my father and his family. Years go by and I discover my father is in and out of correctional facilities. His now ex-wife was a drug addict and her boyfriend abused my siblings and his own daughters and my younger siblings didn't get the best support growing up. Fast forward a few years and my sister was able to emancipate herself and get custody of her brother a few years later. I finally get home from college and I'm able to reconnect with lost family. Emotions soar and as time progressed we both just felt a little more lingering in the background. We both went through some troubled times in our separate personal lives and leaned on to each other for support. And it just kind of happened. Neither of us felt ashamed about it. We felt at peace with the feelings and love we had for each other. And life went on. I went back to school. She attended veterinary school herself. And we kept a closer connection since we were able to get each other back in each one's life. We still keep in touch when time allows. Ah hey here how you doing there? Ultimately we know where we stand with each other, but we both moved on to other relationships and are grateful that we had one another to help us through troubled times. I love my sister and I'd say down my life to save hers if she ever needed it. I felt like a failure of a big brother because I was not able to be there for her growing up. But the things you don't get to know as a kid can't allow them to haunt you as an adult. But the things we did as adults healed a broken bond and allowed us to reconnect and share everything with each other that we miss growing up. To add some side notes to this, it is strange when close friends first hear the story. It often causes weird looks and comments and has at times caused rifts in friendships. I don't know if any other family members on either side actually know about what went on between us during that time. But ultimately we were excited to have a mutual connection between us and reassured that we are never alone out there. We'll always have each other for support. Albeit, much different circumstances moving forward. There was never any penetration, but we explored and did just about everything else. My dad married her mom 
when we were 6, and we were always close, and played together as kids I don't remember exactly how it all got started, but we used to build tents as kids, and it must have been around 11 or 12, that we started to get close in that type of way and we both encouraged it and it just happened naturally. After the first time we both agreed, that it was wrong, and we should never do it again. Soon after I was sneaking in her room almost every night after parents went to bed. This lasted for about 2 years until age 14. We had a few clothes called of getting caught, but never in the act. At some point one of her best friends found out, and my stepmom. We had a awkward short talk, and let it go. I'm not sure if my stepmom ever told my dad point afterwards it died down a little, but it was more because we were around the age 14 and it was kinda more shameful and because we went to the same school and it was more awkward, so we distanced from each other. We wrote it off as practice for when we finally started dating people. We didn't talk about it or do anything until this day and it was slightly awkward early on in high school but really was not hard and we ended up having a good brother sister relationship point we talked about it once in our late teens early 20s but it was a vague talk about when we did things but we haven't talked about it for over 10 years we are now both married i was a groomsman in her wedding and my brother-in-law was one in mine to my knowledge she has never told him, and I have not told my wife, but feel like I should at some point. It's tough because I don't want our spouses to feel weird about it. We visit and hang out together, say we love each other ECT, and have a very normal and healthy adult sibling relationship like nothing ever happened point I have always carried a small fantasy about those times, but I feel like that's normal considering we were so young and first sexual experience. I had thoughts in early 20s about it, but because of relationships with other people I never acted on it point I'm not sure how common this is, but I consider us super fortunate to still have a great relationship and not let it affect our family. My parents got together when they were around 16, and they met through their parents who were dating at the time, mum's mum and dad's dad. They didn't live in the same house together at that time. Right after they got together my mum got locked out of her house by her abusive father because my dad tried to stop the abuse and her father felt he was losing control of my mum. At that point, mum moved in with them point their parents did get married at some point, then divorced within a year I think. When they were around 19 my parents married and are incredibly happy to this day. When they got together some nasty family members said horrible things about incest etc which it definitely isn't, so my dad cut them out of our lives. My dad lives by the motto that you are only family if you act like it. I have heard the stories but never met them as this happened before I was born. Between the nasty comments from some and mum's father being generally a waste of perfectly good oxygen, the first years were difficult for them. Most of the family were fine, my dad's dad married a lot of people, at least four, and this was one had a civil breakup. Most who knew them don't think anyone should hold it against my parents, that that is how they met, especially as the other relationship ended within two years, and mum and dad have been married over 30 years now. Point my dad's dad died 10 years ago, but my mother and him were very close as he gave her a place to stay, had always been supportive, helped protect her from her own father, and was a fantastic grandfather. At my parents' wedding, my dad's dad is in both of the sides of the family pick as a stand-in father. I was 13 when I met my stepdad's first cousin. I hated that motherfucker. He was a year younger than me and never took a shower, always wore the same clothes that weren't washed, and had horrible temper tantrums when he didn't get his way. Things like breaking his 90 year old grandmother's front door and telling his mother he will kill her if he can't get a puppy. Yeah point he had the biggest crush on me. But since I was surrounded by his family and me and my mother were the scapegoats. I 100% blame her for her codependency issues. I had to deal with it. He would grab me, holding down my arms and force me to lay down with him. When I would try to make him stop, he would tell me he was going to kill himself, or he would go home and cut himself and send me pictures of it after I grew some balls and went and see, even though he lived right next to me. I was getting sheet about it, but didn't care, because I didn't want to deal with him point around 16. He seemed to have maybe grown up some, like he was volunteering at the fire station nearby and doing some type of charity work. 
when he talked to me. I didn't mind completely, he seemed more grown up, like we could be friends he still had a crush on me. I didn't like that. I made one sexual joke though, it's just in my personality, and he took advantage of that point back then. I was young and dumb. I thought you had to be in a relationship with the person you slept with, so I was in a relationship with him point he was incredibly abusive. Years later I've moved, and am in a new relationship, and I'm still trying to cope with it. Well, it's finally here. Here goes. I had sex with my first cousin. At that time she was 7 years older than me. I was 20 to she was 29. She had 2 kids and a common law husband. One night I was in her city, and I had no place to sleep in. I texted her, if I can sleep at her place. Her husband wasn't home at that time and she agreed. That night we just talked a lot point it's been years since I saw her, and she still looked as pretty as ever. She looks like a Korean model. I had a crush on her, since I was in high school and often fat thinking about her. That night I was imagining dirty scenes but nothing really happened. I left her house in the morning, and went back home point the next day she messaged me, and we started messaging each other frequently. To my surprise, she got flirty, and asked me if I wanted to play with her. After a few days, I went back to her place, while her husband was away, and we had sex. Thus began my sexual relationship with my cousin. I would frequently visit her, while her husband was away. Things got messy when she started to catch feelings and I also realized that aside from sex, we didn't really agree on most things. She then became really toxic and jealous whenever I went out with female friends. I had to end things with her because the drama was taking a toll on my mental health. Point fast forward several months, she left her husband. The kids a baby and a 5 year old were at the custody of the husband. She has a new guy now and is going back to college. To study point I tried to reconcile and rebuild our relationship as cousins, but that was too late. She loathes me now, and we blocked each other everywhere. The last I spoke to her was when she screamed on the phone and called me a loser because of a meme I shared, and she thought that was about her when it wasn't she sh point tldr slept with my cousin. The dynamic became toxic. We are dead to each other now. Well, I had several stories, there they go, when I was 7 years old, M7, I had a homosexual encounter with my cousin, M13, it happened like this, he was one of my childhood friends, we almost always went to church together, yes, he and I came from Christian families, he just had entered puberty, and as it happened to all of us, he was very hormonal and out of control, he had already discovered born, I also did it at 6 years old. The event was this. One afternoon when he came to my house to play, we went to my room and started playing Grand Theft Auto Vice City. We listened to music, we talked about girls, until we started to get bored, and he went on the night light, and it occurred to him to put born straight. We saw the typical Latin pages of 2010. We talked about what we would do to the girls in the videos, and we both got quite excited, even when I was 7 years old, my bonus was already erect. Question, he breaks the ice, and says let's fact like in the videos, and I agreed, he gave the initiative, and gave me a blue, job, he souped my little 7 centimeters bonus, as it was obvious, I did not feel anything, since I had not developed my sexual organs, then, he pulls down his pants, Takes out his 15 centimeters bonus and tells me it's your turn. I was very intimidated by the size of his bonus. I touched him. He had a very pleasant smell and he said suck it again. But I didn't want to. I don't remember why. It was really a blurry memory. I just think I was disgusted by the idea of sucking a bonus. Seeing that I did not want to do it. He tried to manipulate myself psychologically with the following phrase, if you suck it, you will have a lot of muscles he shows me his bicep. Obviously I didn't agree either, but I gave his glands a little lick to stop him from bothering me, and apparently he felt guilty seeing that I was disgusted, and he backed away, then sat on the PC chair, and then began to jerk off in front of me to ejaculate at once. He ejaculated a lot of semen, then he ate it, and he repeated the phrase, now that I ate this, I will be stronger than you. After that, he, dissatisfied, wanted to try again, but in another way, he told me, what do you think, 
if I fuck your ass, and then you fuck me, I answered okay in the moment, so that he would not feel bad, and not to generate another uncomfortable moment I agreed, I lowered my pants to my knees, I put myself in doggy style and he tried to put his penis in my asshole. But he could not, he could only put 3 centimeters. it was very hard and Maya's hole was quite tight, not to mention that it hurt it a lot, and I told him to take it out. Then he, frustrated again, showed me more born videos, and told me, look at the hoe that doesn't hurt, it only hurts at first, and then she starts to like it. I told him I didn't want to do it again, until that he told me, I'll let you fuck me first, but then I fuck you, and I agreed. I wanted to know what it feels like to put the bonus in another person and I did. He pulled down his pants again. He threw himself in the floor. He got on four. And I started to put my penis in his asshole. Without lubrication or anything. I did it. It cost me a lot. Because my penis was erect. But being so young. It bent a lot. But he did not stop tell me very good. My name. Like that. That. That while he masturbated. Until he was about to ejaculate again. And he said enough, it's my turn again. And I was about to lie on the floor again. But his mother just called him, my aunt. And so to speak, I was saved. Today I'm 17 years old. I do not have any trauma about that. In fact I always considered myself heterosexual. Until at 15 I began to feel attracted to men. And then I remembered that afternoon with my cousin. And I began to masturbate fantasizing about let it happen again. At the age of 9, M9, I began to have links with another cousin, a year younger than me, M8. There were several times when we went to a distant church that was 2 hours by car from our city, and when the service ended, I took him to the back, to a room that was next to the bathrooms to play, and there we kissed. We could not do anything else because we both had suits and if we did not lower our pants or whatever for later putting them on again would look wrinkled and that would raise suspicion not counting that my cousin's mother followed him everywhere and as soon as we finished kissing she was very close to discovering us several times that same day when the service had finished and we had to return many relatives of the church were left without knowing how to return therefore my family and my uncles decided to take them what they did was to divide the passengers, therefore in our car, there was the driver, my uncle, my aunt in the passenger seat, and in the back hundreds my big brother, my two cousins, FF, and a strange guy from the church. Me and my cousin were in the trunk of the car, yes, this was totally illegal, but where I live nobody takes the law seriously, not even the right wing conservatives, therefore, they did it without problem. Question, the trunk was dark, the route was dark. The only way they could see what we were doing was by turning their heads 180 and despite having the power of god they could not so we could do ours without being seen taking advantage of the trunk window and the few lights that passed. We began to touch our private parts until he took his dick out and asked me to suck him, whispering. I just licked the glands, I took out my bonus and asked him to suck it, I was so excited that we could see a drop of pre-seminal fluid and he licked it and swallowed it, then said that it, we both hoped the other would give us the blue job of our lives, but we both were disgusted by the idea of licking Benizes. So neither of us, we dared to do it. Time passed, we were still excited, so it occurred to us to try to fag, I don't know why. He decided to be the passive, I was excited, we lay down on a spoon, I being the big spoon, and I tried to put my penis in her little butt. It was complicated, it didn't work in fact, all the time we communicated by whispering, the others were talking loudly, and laughing out loud at silly stories of Christian families, trying to organize themselves, so that I could stick my penis in his whole faking time, and at one point, he forgets to whisper, and says, my name. Put your balls in there, and the whole car heard him. His mother scolded him. Everyone asked what the hell we were doing back there. We didn't answer anything, and we pretended to be asleep. One of my cousins turns on the light inside the car to see what we were doing. I reacted instinctively, and I attached myself even more to my cousin's butt, so that my penis or his naked butt is not seen, nor is it seen that we drop our pants. We said, turn off the light, we want to sleep, and apparently it worked, they thought that, when my cousin said, 
put your balls in there. He meant better accommodate your balls to sleep better. We were children. Therefore, they wouldn't suspect nothing wicked about us. The light was turned off again, and we continued driving home. Then about two weeks passed, when I finished a service in the church of my city, I was playing with my cousin and my other friends in the courtyard of the church. When at one point my aunt calls me and my cousin, her mother, and says, I know what you were doing in the car the other night, so I'm going to talk to your dad and your dad to looking at me. Time passed, I never knew if she really spoke with my parents or not, I think she did not do it because she did not want to cause problems and she only wanted to scare us so that we would stop doing it, a great woman, many times I had fantasies with her too, she is a kind of Italian milf with blue eyes and black hair, she must be in her 40s now but still quite fit. Returning to the subject of my cousin, that was my first and last meeting with him. Today I do not regret it at all. In fact I still have fantasies with him. I used to masturbate imagining us both doing a 69 until we come each other in our mouths at same time. Very hot. Verse 1. Ronnie Van Zant. Big wheels keep on turning carry me home. To see Mike and singing songs about the Southland I miss Labber me once again. And I think it's a sin. Yes well I heard Mr. Young sing about her. Southern man. Well, I heard old Neil put her down well. I hope Neil Young will remember a southern man don't need him around. Anyhow chorus. Ronnie Van Zant, Sweet home Alabama. Where the skies are so blue sweet home Alabama lord. I'm coming home to you. Verse 2. Ronnie Van Zant, In Birmingham they love the governor. Boo. 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 Now we all did what we could do now Watergate does not bother me does your conscience bother you? Tell the truth. Chorus, Ronnie Van Zant, Sweet Home Alabama, where the skies are so blue Sweet Home Alabama Lord, I'm coming home to you. Verse 3, Ronnie Van Zant, now Muscle Shoals, has got the swampers and they've been known to pick a song or two, yes they do, lord they get me off so much they pick me up, when I'm feeling blue now how about you? Chorus, Ronnie Van Zant, Sweet Home Alabama, where the skies are so blue Sweet Home Alabama Lord, I'm coming home to you Sweet Home Alabama, oh, Sweet Home, baby, where the skies are so blue, and the governor's true, Sweet Home Alabama, Lordy, Lord, I'm coming home to you, yeah, yeah, outro. Ronnie Van Zant, my, Montgomery's got to stop there Montgomery's coming up short, 